Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ray Milan, William Holden, and Veronica Lake in I Wanted Wings. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of mankind's oldest dreams, traceable straight back through recorded history to the ancient myths of Icarus and Bellerophon, came true on a lonely North Carolina sand dune on December 17, 1903, when man stretched his wings and flew. America gave man the airplane, and now as the forces of freedom meet the powers of despotism in the battle for the world, America must give freedom wings for victory. The planes that were counted by the hundreds in the last war, when I learned to fly, must be counted by the tens of thousands now, and there must be men to fly them. I Wanted Wings is a story of some of the men who will fight this battle of the sky, a story of the cadets of the Army Air Corps, written by Lieutenant Bernie Lay, Jr., now on active duty with the Air Corps. Paramount's picture must have given everyone who saw it a deep sense of pride in these gallant boys. And tonight we have the same stars who thrilled you on the screen. Ray Milland, William Holden, and Veronica Lake. Ray has just served a year's term with me in Reap the Wild Wind. For your producer, a drama like I Wanted Wings is very close to him. Because in 1917, I started the first airline to carry passengers on regular scheduled flights between cities in the United States. And we trained many pilots for the Army, too. Traveling across the country last week, I met many people who may have, may have been strangers, in fact, but seemed like old friends. Because they were regular members of this Monday night family circle of ours. Listeners who helped raise the curtain in the Lux Radio Theater by going all out for Lux Toilet Soap. As one of them, a charming lady, shook hands with me, she told me how much she enjoyed these weekly evenings in the theater and pressed into my hand what she said was her ticket for our next performance. The ticket, I discovered, was a carefully folded wrapper from a cake of Lux Toilet Soap. As a matter of fact, I think I can see her now, sitting out there in that corner of our theater which covers the state of Illinois. So for all of you who feel the same way, here's another play and another fine group of actors. It's curtain time for I Wanted Wings, starring Ray Milland as Jeff, William Holden as Al, and Veronica Lake as Sally Vaughan, with Lynn Carver as Carolyn. <laughs> Somewhere near Marchfield, an army flying fortress wings low over the hills, too low. Lurching through the night sky, it tries valiantly to gain altitude, its four giant motors roaring defiance to the earth. Suddenly, a ridge looms up in the darkness. With the speed of a comet, the giant plane sweeps on to its doom. Army flying fortress en route back from maneuvers is reported to have crashed in the hills north of March Field. The pilot is alive and several members of the crew are believed to have bailed out safely. Officials refuse to comment on the unconfirmed report that a woman was found dead in the plane. Now the pilot of the wrecked flying fortress is placed on trial, gathered in solemn session to fix the blame for the disaster. The examining officers hear the charge. Charge one, violation of the 64th article of war. Specification, in that Jefferson Young, 2nd Lieutenant Air Corps, having received a lawful command from Captain Everett Mercer not to attempt to take off from the scene of an emergency landing, did willfully disobey the order, with the result that injuries were sustained by the crew, a passenger was killed, and the airplane destroyed. Charge two, Violation of the 96th Article of War. Specification. 
in that Jefferson Young, 2nd Lieutenant Air Corps, did at Marchfield, California, permit an unauthorized passenger, one Sally Vaughn, on board a Flying Fortress airplane in violation of existing regulations and to the prejudice of good order and military discipline. Are there any preliminary statements from Defense Counsel? I wish to waive counsel, sir. The court to understand the accused does not wish to be represented? Yes, sir. Very well. The judge advocate will proceed. How does the accused plead to the specification? Charge one. Guilty, sir. Guilty. How does the accused plead to the specification? Charge two. Guilty, sir. You have no further statement? No, sir. The court will be closed pending an examination of the record of the accused. Well, gentlemen, here is the record. Name Jefferson Young III. Education, Lawrenceville Preparatory School, Yale University. Applied for Air Corps training, was admitted to Randolph Field, January 1938. Colonel Branson. Well, yes. May I be permitted to speak, sir? I'm Captain Mercer. Well, no witnesses have been called yet, Captain Mercer. Oh, I realize that, sir. But I feel I have something to say which may bear on this case. Mm, who is this other man? Ludlow, sir. Albert Ludlow. I used to be a cadet at Randolph Field. You're an enlisted man now. I was the crew chief on that wrecked plane, sir. I see. You men are friends of the accused? Yes, sir. And we know why this thing happened. And we know why he's pleading guilty, sir. Well, I see no reason why this court shouldn't hear you. Proceed, Captain Mercer. Thank you, sir. We, uh, uh... We'll have to go back quite a while. Just about the time you mentioned before, sir. When Jeff Young was admitted to Randolph Field. He was in the same class as Ludlow and entered on the same day. I was the officer in charge of New Cadets. All right, you new men, fall in here. Give me your attention. Men, down here at Randolph Field, we don't care who you are or where you came from. The Army's only interested in two things. Can you fly and will you make an officer? And we'll soon find out. Now, before you report to the flight surgeon for your physical... Take a look at the men on either side of you. Go ahead, take a good look. In four months, one of you won't be here. Dismissed! One out of three washed out. That's a pretty high percentage, isn't it? Well, let's see. You're on my left, this fellow's on my right. You two should toss a coin to find out which one he's talking about. Thanks, it'll probably be me. My name's Tom Cassidy. Uh, I'm Al Ludlow. Jeff Young, gentlemen, at your service. Say, uh, you know, this place is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Look at all those planes up there. Scares you a little. Scared of flying, Ludlow? Uh-uh. Scared of not flying. It's okay with you fellas? I'll take this part of the room over here. Okay, Cassidy? Okay. How about it, Mr. Ludlow? Well, it's all right by me, Mr. Thank Young. You. Thank you. Come to think of it, it's got to be all right. You're all moved in. Hey, who's the picture? Your girl? No, no, just me. I keep it around to remind myself how good I am. What are you supposed to be doing on the horse? That is a polo pony, my friend. Well, well, fancy that. He plays polo. That's right. I'm an eight-goal man. Hey, Ludlow, this guy must be filthy rich. Yeah, eight million bucks. A million of gold. That's how they rate him. Say, Young, uh, what does a tough guy like you want down here anyway? Well, maybe I'll find out just how tough I am. I don't have to find out. You see this statue? This is what they gave me for being the toughest left half in the Big Ten. Well, it's too bad they don't have cheerleaders down here. Yeah, and here's the shoe that kicked the winning field goal against Notre Dame last year. Oh, very nice. Someday I'll show you my baby picture. <laughs> I can see this is going to be very pleasant, living in the Hall of Fame. Say, Ludlow, what did you do before you came here? Well, I was a mechanic, worked in garages, airplane factories. I tried just about everything. Where'd you get your two years college equivalent? Night school? No, I never stayed long enough in one place. I've got a satchel full of diplomas from correspondence schools. But, but what brought you down here? And I told you before, I want to fly. Lower classman reports to supply room. Lower classman reports to barbershop. Lower classman report for infantry drill. Lower classman report for buzzer practice. Lower classman report to the media Lower classman class. report to photographic room. You know something? I've made a terrible mistake. What's the matter, Young? Oh, nothing, nothing, sir. I... Except I thought they taught you how to fly down here. They do. You'll meet your flying instructor tomorrow. All right, you men, listen carefully. 
That thing over there is an airplane. And I'm going to teach you how to fly one. I hope. <laughs> All right, let's look her over. I'll tell you everything I know about it. All I ask is your strict attention. I expect you to make mistakes, but don't make excuses. Any questions? Good. Oh, you, Young, I'll take you first. Yes, sir. Call in there. Yes, sir. Now, the rest of you get over there and watch. You all set, Young? Yes, sir. Well, get your hand off the stick. All we do this morning is shake hands with flying. Start feeling at home on a plane. Get familiar with the sky. Now, fasten your belt. Try to land the airplane, Young. Nobody can land an airplane. He's back on your stick and keep it from landing. Hold it off the ground until it lands itself. Well, that's better. That's better. Get your nose down, Cassidy. Don't land out of a stall. Get your nose down. That's it. Now you're flying. All right, Cassidy, bring her in. No, 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 Ludlow. You keep making the same mistakes. Listen, Ludlow, don't use the whole field for a landing. Fly the airplane. Don't let it fly you. Now try it again. Here's the list, boys. The ignoble order of blind and dumb airplane pilots. Hey, who's ahead, Tom? The Dumbbell Derby is now being led by Al Ludlow. He bounced four times on that last landing. Four bumps, eh? At two bits a bump, he owes a buck to the kitty. Mark it down. He's marked. He owes 30 bucks right now. <laughs> oh, what's the difference how good or how bad, bad we are? They don't tell us up to solo, do they? Yeah. Maybe they're going to wash out the whole battalion. Oh, though. shut up. Hey, here comes the bouncing boy himself. Yeah, hello, Al. Welcome home. Yeah, I'm lucky still I have my breakfast with me. Four bounces, pal. One buck for the kitty. Uh, I'll give it to you up in the room. You know, Al, you ought to make you a wholesale rate. A layoff, Young. The way I fly is my own business. <laughs> okay. Young. Jeff Young. Yes, sir. On the line, right away. Solo. Yes, sir. What? Solo? Oh, you lucky. Hey, where's my flying suit? Don't crowd me, boys. Give me some air. Come on, oh. Jeff. Snap it up. And listen, get out there and show them. Give them the old power play. And just remember one thing. Keep your head, kid. Oh, don't worry about me, boys. You climb a little faster, you glide a little further. That's all there is to it. That's right, Jeff, but don't get nervous. I'm not nervous. And why you got your suit on backwards? Huh? <laughs> young, where are you? Coming, sir. Ready in a second. Come on, Young. You're going to solo. Not to be married. Uh, hey, Jeff, wait a second. Huh? What's the matter, Al? Oh, nothing. Just good luck. Oh, thanks. Young, get out of there. Yes, sir. Was I all right, sir? Listen, you were only supposed to stay up there five minutes. Didn't you see me flagging you in? No, sir. Nobody ever does on his first solo. You send them up for five minutes and they try for an endurance record. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Oh, gosh, Jeff, you were swell. Oh, nothing to it, my friend. You just climb a little faster and glide a come little further. Come on down. Come on down. You're still ten feet in the air. <laughs> hey. Hey, what's that? What's what? Over there with the line. Oh, well, let's see. Offhand, I'd say it was a girl. Offhand, I'd say it was a very beautiful girl. What's she doing, taking pictures? What do you care? You've got plenty of pictures of yourself. Oh, I've got to look into this. See you around, Tom. Mike, bring that reflector in a little. How's this? Uh, hold it there a second. A little to the left. I want it on the undersection of the wing. Okay. Uh, too far, just a little bit. Oh, would you mind moving, please? Who, me? Well, you're the only person in my way. Oh, Sorry, I just wanted to watch it, all. Why, haven't you ever seen an airplane before? Hold it, Mike. Say, you're pretty free with that camera on an army post, aren't you? Would you mind? You're casting a shadow on my reflector. You know what? I think you're a spy. That's it, Mike. You know what happens to spies? They shoot them at sunrise. Look, I'm trying to make a series of pictures for a national magazine with the full permission and cooperation of the United States Army. A likely story. What kind of pictures? <laughs> you know, I hear it costs nearly $25,000 to make a pilot. Well, that's very educational. <laughs> Don't you think you've wasted enough of the taxpayers' money? We'll set up over there for the next one, Mike. Okay, Miss Bartlett. Oh, oh of course. That's right, Carolyn Bartlett. Photography's dynamic symmetry girl. Kansas corn silos, steam turbines, the private life of a blast furnace. <laughs> yes. Oh. And I must say, I find them even more interesting than Junior Birdman. Bye, Junior. <clears throat> now, just one thing more. You men who have soloed are starting to feel like pretty hot pilots. During the past week, several minor violations of flying regulations have cropped up. 
You've heard of Cadet Barker's being turned in for low flying over Fort Houston two days ago. But you may not know that he met the board this morning. And they threw him out. So go easy. For you men who haven't soloed yet, I'd like to give you a little tip. The Army can devote just so much time finding out if you're a flyer or not. So make every minute in the air count. That's all for today. Oh, Ludlow, I want to see you. Stick around. Yes, sir. Sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. Ludlow, would you say that I know my business? Well, they think so around here, sir. Uh, why am I losing out on a man who's got everything it takes to be a flyer? That couldn't be me, could it, sir? What's on your mind, Ludlow? Family? Money? Uh, women? What makes you... Just tell me I'm through, sir. I can take it. Ludlow, why don't you forget her? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Oh, yes, you do. Come on, break down. Oh, I, I can't forget her. I keep seeing her, the way she was the night we busted up. I keep hearing her. You're a flop, she said. You'll never be anything but a $15 a week grease monkey. I was sore, too. I, I told her to beat it, and she did. After that, I threw up my job and pulled out. And things didn't go so well, and I kept telling myself it was just bad breaks. But after a while, I started wondering, maybe it was me. That's one of the reasons I, I joined the Air Corps. You see, I had to know about myself. If I wash out, then she was right. What if she is right? I know a lot of swell guys who are $15 a week grease monkeys. Now, the trouble with you is you're trying too hard. Relax. Stop tensing up. It's part of learning to fly, a big part. Oh, I know that. Now, too. look, Ludlow. Flyers are just like all other men. And they fall into the same two groups. Those that women have made happy, and those that women have made unhappy. If you can't forget this, girl, don't try. But get this through your head. You can still be a whale of a flyer. Now, look, Tom, it's very simple. Catastrophic instability is a characteristic of an aircraft which, having deviated from level flight, tends Listen, to... Listen, I've soloed, haven't I? Why do I have to learn this junk? You want to know what you're doing, don't you? No, what for? So, hey, yeah, I'll tell this guy, will you? What can I tell him? I'm still a groundhog. Hey, Tom, you're wanted at Lieutenant Mercer's office. Now, what for? They must need some expert advice. Go on, beat it. Oh, catastrophic instability is the uh, characteristic of an airplane. What's on your mind, Al? Nothing. You've been sitting there all night tying knots in those goggles. Look at that, a perfect sheep shank. Now, I'll roll up your flaps, will you? <laughs> it's nice to talk to a hot pilot. Yeah. You're in a class all by yourself, aren't you? So they tell me. Just watch me up there and maybe you'll solo too. Come on, Al, snap out of it. Here, give me those goggles. Cut it out. Come on before you break them. Let go, do you hear? Listen, what? See what you did? I told you to lay off of me. Are you crazy? You never learn, do you? Quit it, Al, listen. Right alone. What's the matter, Young? Nothing, sir. I know you're supposed to be a gentleman down here. You don't have to tell me what I'm supposed to be here or any other place. I'm leaving. But before I go, I'm going to... I'll cut it. Cut it, do you hear? Now go and cool off. You're a lucky cotton, you, Ludlow. Wash you out fast for striking an upperclassman. Now, what's this all about? Who started it? I guess I did, sir. Had a little argument. I got sore and I popped him. I don't blame him for losing his head. Report to orderly room for disciplinary action. Yes, sir. You don't have to take any raps from me. No, don't be a chump. I wouldn't want to see anybody washed out before he had a chance at what he came here for. Well, what's the difference? They're sending me up on a test tomorrow. The last chance I'll get. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I put the rib on. I know how you feel. Oh, that's a laugh. How can you know? You've never been in a storm in your life. Oh, no? I've been in a storm ever since I got here. You? What are you talking about? Every time I walk on that flying line, those faces nearly drive me nuts. 300 guys daring Jeff Young III to be as good as Joe Dokes. Oh. Well, I never figured you were afraid of anything. You want to know something else? The louder I talk, the more scared I am. But that's strictly between you and me. Here. Try wearing my goggles tomorrow. They were lucky for me. Well, thanks, Jeff. Keep swinging, Al. You've still got a chance. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Ray Milland, William Holden, and Veronica Lake will return in Act Two of I Wanted Wings. And here's our young friend, Sally. Oh, Sally, I've got a question for you. When it comes to beauty care, 
don't you suppose there are lots of girls like, well, like this young lady, for instance? It's late evening, and she's getting ready for what she thinks is her beauty sleep. One, two, three, four, up, down, side, twist. That makes ten times. <sighs> Grand exercise for the waistline, though. Oh, but I'm sleepy. I think I'll just skip the rest and turn in right now. Goodness, Mr. Ruick, isn't she going to do a thing about her complexion? Is she really going to leave dust and stale cosmetics on her skin all night long? Sally, I'm afraid that young lady doesn't realize what a chance she's taking with her good looks when she neglects complexion care. Well, Mr. Ruick, I think somebody ought to tell her about Lux Toilet Soap and how little time it takes to give her skin real beauty care every night. Well, Sally, why don't you tell all the ladies in our audience about the Lux Soap Facial that Hollywood screen stars use? The Active Lather Facial, they say, is such a wonderful beauty aid. Here's all you do. You pat Lux Toilet Soap's Active Lather lightly in. It feels so rich, creamy on your skin. You rinse with warm water and follow with a dash of cool. Then you pat your face dry with a soft towel. Now your skin feels exquisitely fresh. And it is. You mentioned Lux Toilet Soap's active lather, Sally. Yes. Lux Soap has active lather that removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt. It's thorough, but it's gentle, too. So creamy, it's like a caress to your skin. Leaves it feeling beautifully soft and smooth. Thank you, Sally. Nine out of ten lovely screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap for their million-dollar complexion. If you haven't tried it, why not get three cakes of this luxurious white soap tomorrow? It's as fine a soap as money can buy, you know, yet it's so very inexpensive. Try Lux Soap Active Lather Facials every day for 30 days. Just see what Hollywood's gentle, protecting care can do for you. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of I Wanted Wings, starring Ray Milland as Jeff, William Holden as Al, and Veronica Lake as Sally Vaughan, with Lynn Carver as Carolyn. Two men stand before the officers of the court-martial to testify for their friends. Captain Mercer's voice is quiet as he goes back over the record of Jeff Young, a record which does not appear on paper, but only in the minds of the men who knew him. Jeff Young was a great flyer, sir. He still is. I always believed it was Young who pulled Ludlow through his first solo. That's right, sir. We talked all night before it. You see, I thought I was the only one who was afraid of floppy. But when I found out that Jeff was too, why, it gave me some sort of confidence. Well, anyway, I... Oh, I'm sorry, Captain Mercer. Well, that's all right. This is really your part of the story. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Proceed, please. Yes, sir. Well, I passed my solo, and that night, Jeff and I went out to celebrate. We went to a club near the field, the Club Colonnade. I saw you last night and got that home. Take it up, Al. We've got to be on the line at 8 in the morning. Now, don't forget, Jeff. This war dance is on me. Oh, we'll settle that later. Oh, no. I just drew a month's pay. I'm showing you the bright light. Okay. Hey, look over there. That table near the wall. Ah, what is it? Oh, it's Tom. Yeah, and stabbing me in the back. That's my girl he's with. Your girl? Well, she doesn't know it yet, but I saw her first. Come on, let's break it up. Well, take off. I'm right on your tail. You like this girl, Al. She takes pictures. Well, who cares what she does? How are you, Tom? How's the boy? Oh, uh, hello. Well, well, Miss Barton, the woman's work is never done, huh? What pose is this? Light life of flying cadet? Oh, occasionally I come out of my dark room, Mr. Young. Well, now, that's fine. You don't mind if we try to lighten up the party? No, not at all. Yeah, sit down. Thank you. Miss Bartlett, I'd like you to know Mr. Ludlow, hottest pilot in the class. Hello. Hello. Mr. Cassidy was just telling me the most fascinating story. I know. He had the ball on the two-yard line and his skull fracture. My ribs, not my skull. You see? He's irritable, tired, overworked, and overexposed. Now, look, uh, how about my having the next dance, Miss Bartlett? Oh, certainly. You can find somebody to dance with you. <clears throat> Well, that ought to hold me for a while. I'll take a look around anyway. Aha, now there's a fancy little dish. That girl's singing with the band. See her, Al? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Well, they ought to put that on the menu. Yeah. Like to meet her? 
Oh, no. No, no, thanks, Jeff. Just wait here. I'll show you how it's done. Uh, excuse me, Miss Barbara. Hello there. Hello. Say, you're a swell singer. Is your dancing just as good? Sorry, but I never dance with the customers. Well, if you dance with me, I'll see that you're made an honorary member of the Air Corps. Thanks, but I don't think I'm the type for wings. Oh, yes, you are. Come on. But I don't want to dance. But you are dancing. Nice, isn't it? Say, who are you? Jeff Young. Jeff Young? No, I know you're crazy. Okay. You aren't really Jefferson Young, are you? Jefferson Young the third, but just Jeff to you. Thanks. My name's Sally Vaughan. How are you, Sally? You know, you don't look at all like your picture. Well, I'm sorry you're disappointed. I'm not. You look just the way you should. Got me all figured out, haven't you? I think so. You're smarter than I am. I never know what I'm going to do next. And then we were on the 10 yard line. It was fourth down, two minutes to go. Hey, Tom, not while you're dancing. You might forget and go off tackle. Oh, cut it out. Don't pay any attention to him. Go on, Tom. Who's that fellow cutting in on your girl? Tom Cassidy. My girl? Who says she's my girl? You do. She does, too, with her eyes. Ah, you're way off the court. Say, come over here. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Hey, Al. Oh, yeah. Al, meet Miss Vaughn. Look, dance together, you two. I've got to intercept a pass. See you later. Hello, Al. Hello, Sally. Well, that's a warm welcome. Lay off, Sally. I started all over down here. I'm after something new. What'd you follow me for? <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. I'm here with the band. Oh, good. Stay with it. Okay, Al. That's how it is. Yeah, that's how. You messed up my life once. Once is enough. Don't worry. I've struggled along without you. I just hope you find what you're looking for. Say, is that fellow really Jeff Young? Uh, yeah. And don't waste your time, Sally. He's way out of your league. Think so? Maybe. Tom. Oh, Tom couldn't make it today, so I came instead. Oh, Mr. Young. Hello. I'm rather busy. If you don't mind, I'll... I don't mind at all. Maybe I can help. Need any good shots today? Got some great ideas. Thanks, but I've got about everything I need. You mean, uh, you finished up around here? That's right. Then what do you do? Well, you'll find me photographing bananas. I'm flying to Guatemala tomorrow. Oh. Oh, I wish I'd known you were leaving. I, I'd have... Well, I... Yes? Well, it kind of cuts my time down. Excuse me, will you? I've got a picture here I'm working on. Let's see it. Say, who's that cadet? Friend of yours? I like to think of him as a friend. I don't remember seeing him around here. You ought to know him. You see him every day. He's no glamour boy. His ears are too big. But he'll make a magazine cover just the same. Oh, quite a guy. What's his name? Yankee. Joe Yankee. He's a composite of a lot of the cadets down here. Uh, his chin is yours. Mine? <laughs> Is that my chin? <laughs> Why not? You know, it's a funny thing, but uh, I've got a composite picture of a girl, too. Miss America, in a green smock and a hands in hyper solution. She knows all the angles and uh, waits for development. That's rather cute. Say, look, uh, would you mind if I kissed you? No. I don't think so. That's the way it was, sir. Miss Bartlett left Randolph a couple of days later. But she and Jeff wrote each other a lot. And they uh, all... Just a moment, please. Yes, sir. Are you sure, Ludlow, that all this has a bearing on the case? Yes, sir. Jeff Young is on trial here for wrecking an army airplane. Oh, it all adds up, sir. It would just give us a little more time. Well, uh, go on, Ludlow. I told you, sir, that Sally had... that Jeff had met Sally Vaughn. But he didn't see her again until... well, until the day we had a crack up on the field. One of the boys hit the hangar. It wasn't bad, but the plane started to burn, and Jeff was standing by... I... I, I don't think he was scared. It, he just couldn't move. Well, somebody else got to the plane and pulled the pilot out. It was Ludlow who did it, sir. I just happened to be there, sir. Anyway, Jeff couldn't forgive himself. That night, he went to the club colonnade and took a few drinks just to forget. Well, hello, Jeff Young III. Sally Vaughn. Uh, now I know why I came down here. 
What took you so long? I was trying to be a flyer. You won't be if they catch you down here on a weekday night. Nah, let them catch me. I'm through. I'm no Joe Yankee. Who? I want to fly, I'll buy a blimp. You can buy anything you want. Yeah, anything but wings. You gotta have nerve for that, didn't you know? You gotta have guts. What's the matter, Jeff? What happened? It crashed right in front of me. And I stood there. I knew the guy. He was a friend of mine. And I stood there while he started to burn. Jeff Young, the big shot pilot. <laughs> Take it easy, Jeff. Forget it. Forget it? Yeah, sure. Look, Sally, stick with me tonight, will you? I don't want to be alone. J just don't leave me. I won't. Come on. Let's get out of here. Is Jeff here? Isn't it pretty late for you to go around ringing doorbells? They told me at the colonnade Jeff was with you. Well, well, old Elsie Wowsy himself. Sit down, cadet. I will let a ring on the house. Nothing's too good for a hero. Joe Yankee himself. Kind of a cross between Sir Galahad and Daniel Boone. He's full of moxie. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that tomorrow, Jeff. Right now you're coming back with Oh, me. no, I'm not. Sally and I are pals. She isn't looking for Joe Yankee. Jeff Young is good enough for her. Plenty good enough. You said it, Sal. Hey, where's my drink? Oh, it's in the kitchen. Excuse me. Don't go away, Al. Lay off him, Sally. I'm warning you. You're getting what you want down here. Why shouldn't I? You want us to? I couldn't be on the level, could I? Well, you never were with me. Now, tell him to go back to the field. You must think I'm crazy. I like this guy. How long do you think it'd last, Sally? Jeff's no dope. What happens when he sobers up? You see you, then, for what you are. A smart little tramp with her hooks in him. Shut up! Why, you... Sally, I'll tell you once more. Send Jeff back or I'll spill the whole story. Just try it. Here we are. Come on, Al. Have a little drink, huh? Oh, no, thanks. Jeff, <clears throat> you'd better go back before you get in any more trouble. Huh? Yeah, Al, take a little drink. Jeff, did you hear me? Sure, I heard you, and I'm not going. Yes, you are. Come on now. It's getting late. Oh. So you're running out on me, huh? You're one of those hot and cold propositions. I'm not running out on you, Jeff. I'll be waiting around. Sure, sure. You're a good kid, Sal. You're all right. Better run along now. I'll phone you tomorrow. Okay. Don't forget. Come on, Al. Go we know. That was smart, Sally. Well, now it was. But you or your whole army won't get him away from me. And don't ever forget it. Jeff pulled out of that one all right. It took a little time, but after a while he forgot it. And then Carolyn Bartlett came back from Guatemala. It was the night before we left Randolph Field. There was a dance at the field that night to celebrate. Miss me, Mr. Young? Miss you? Say, the day they turned me loose on cross country, I almost made it nonstop to Guatemala. Why did you turn back? It was rather lonely down there. Oh, Mr. Cameron must be slipping. I thought he kept you too busy to be lonely. He always did, till I went to Guatemala. Hey, Jeff, you want it on the phone? Huh? Get that telephone call for you. Tear it up. I'm not taking any calls tonight. You better take this one. Oh. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Go ahead. I'll wait for you out <laughs> Is it? Hello, Jeff. Why haven't you called? Oh, uh, well, I've been busy, Sally. You can't be so busy tonight. I hear there's a dance out there. Well, it's just a little party, our last night at Randolph. I can duck away after the first show. I think I'll drive out for a while. Look, I wouldn't do that, Sally. Why, Jeff, it's been weeks since I've seen you. Look, Sally, we've been all through this. I thought we were going to be intelligent about it. What does that mean? Goodbye, good luck, you go your way, I'll go mine. Don't try and sell me that routine. I wish I could think of a better ending, Sally, but I can't. No? Well, maybe I can. I want to see you tonight. I'm sorry, Sally. I've made other plans. Listen, Mr. Young, drop in here at my place after that dance or I'll start making a few plans of my own. I'm expecting you. Hello? Hello? Hello, Sally? You weren't very long, 
Was it important? Uh, yes, in a way. Uh, look, Carolyn, I want to speak to you. Yes, Jeff. Look, while you were gone, I... Fifty-six days. I counted them. You did? I don't look so unhappy. Well, Carolyn, you see, while... Gosh, it's hard to say. Is it? Carolyn, while you were gone, I went into a tailspin. And crashed right on the bandstand of the Colonnade Cafe. How did you know? Oh, I saw her lining you up. But it's over now, really, it is. I'm sure you wouldn't have asked me if it weren't. Look, Carolyn, tell me one thing, will you? How is it nobody ever married you before I will? <laughs> transferred to Kelly Field, and pretty soon we were within two weeks of, of getting our wings. That was about all we could think of. You never got your wings, Ludlow. Uh, no, sir. You see, there was a formation flight one morning, Jeff and Tom and myself, and I was the leader. I guess I was feeling too good. I, I led the formation pretty low over the trees and, well, hedgehopping, sir. I knew it was against regulations, but well, Tom, Tom went even lower than I let him. He was skimming along the ground, and I knew it was going to happen. I tried to signal him up, and he didn't see me. Thomas Cassidy, killed in formation flight. Albert Ludlow, eliminated from the service for disobeying regulations. What kind of a racket is this, anyway? Graduation day, and they throw out the best man in the class for something he wasn't responsible for any more than I was. We egged you into it. Tom's the one that slipped up. Well, I killed Tom. I'll take what's coming to me. If you'd only listen to me, Al, we could have cooked up a story. Well, don't you think I felt bad enough about it without lying out of it? And you didn't do me any good when you horned in on the blame. Almost got yourself washed out, too. Oh, what's the difference? I'm quitting anyway. I'm fed up with discipline. We can have it take a running full twist into the lake. Oh, now, cool off, Jeff. You'll feel better after they pin those wings on you. Wings? I'll hang them up in my trophy room. Now, where do you get off talking like that? You've got no beef. You came down here a polo playing drip, and they made a flyer out of you. I'm, I'm sorry, Jeff. I guess I'm always cut. It's okay. You're right. Yeah. You're flying with you this afternoon. Get out there. Yes, sir. Stick around, will you, Al? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hello, Al. Oh, oh, hello, Carolyn. What's the grip for? Huh? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm leaving. I was just watching the formation for a minute. Pretty, isn't it? Al, you can't go like this. Jeff and I have plans for you. Well, thanks, but I'd rather be on my own. Where are you going? Oh, this is a big country. Look, uh, tell Jeff so long and to stay on the beam. You'll know what I mean. Al, will you... will you kiss me goodbye? Why, sure. Say, how many aviators do you kiss, sister? Sally, what are you doing here? I just drove over to congratulate Jeff. So long, Al. That's right, turn up your nose. Oh, Sally, stop it. Try and make me. I know you, sister. I read about you. Big military wedding for Jeff Young III. Where is he? Come on, Sally, let's get out of here. Let go of me. I'm tired of being pushed around. So they're giving him his wings. They won't dare when I get through. I'll give them a scandal that'll shake the army. I'll tell them a story they won't forget. Oh, now, come on. I'll let her go. Jeff hasn't seen her in months. That's your story. He's seen me lots of times. Jeff Young can't pick me up and drop me without seeing where I'm going to land. I'll make him marry me. Oh, Sally, be sensible. You can't do that. Can't I? You'll see if I can't. You'll see. Carolyn, do you mind? I'm leaving, Al. Write to me, will you? Bye. Sally. Sally, look at me. Jeff gave you a pretty rotten deal, didn't he? I'll say he did. But I'll make it a squirm. I'll take care of that pal of yours. Ah, he's no pal of mine. Not after the way he kicked you around. Well, I'm through being kicked around. Oh, well, I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't want to hurt anybody. But they're always hurting me. Uh, look, Sally, uh... Jeff's got another half an hour in the air, and there's no sense starting anything till you've had a talk with him. Come on, let's go get a drink. All right. Say, why aren't you up there flying? Oh, me? Oh, they washed me out. 
<laughs> Wouldn't you know it? The same old Al. You and me both, a couple of also rants. Come on, Al. I want that drink. <laughs> He didn't even wait to see me. And then this telegram came. I'm taking Sally away. We're getting married. Married? Oh, no. Whatever made Al do a thing like that? Can't you imagine? What do you mean? Jeff, have you been seeing Sally? Yes. She threatened to go to the commandant. I wanted my wings, so I saw her and gave her a check. Do you think that takes care of everything? What do you expect me to do? But Jeff, you can't use a checkbook for a conscience. Well, what's that got to do with us? A lot. Look, I've had a swell time on my own, Jeff. I've got to know what I'm giving it up for. Look, just because Sally she suddenly... She was here this afternoon. She wanted to make trouble. Yeah. I spoke to her and so did Al. What'd she say? Don't you know? Al drove away with her. You wouldn't be getting your wings today if it weren't for him. It's a pleasant thought, isn't it? I wonder if you're worth what he did for you. No. I don't think I am. <laughs> For station identification, this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Ray Milan, William Holden, and Veronica Lake in Act Three of I Wanted Wings. Let's drop in now at one of the parties being given for our boys in the service. Hey, Joe, be a pal. Look, over there. See the slim destroyer in blue? Convoy me over, will you? That's sailor talk for, I want to meet that pretty girl in the blue dress. Introduce me, will you? Now that our young sailor friend has his introduction. Mind if I tell you blue's my favorite color? Especially when it goes with a peaches and cream complexion. Peaches and cream. That's certainly far from a new expression. But even our modern sailor boy can't think of a better way to describe a lovely Lux soap complexion. Smooth and radiantly fresh. That's the kind of complexion that gives a girl real beauty. Beauty that never fails to attract admiring eyes. Hollywood stars know this. Here's what charming Madeline Carroll says. There's always romance in soft, smooth skin. Complexion beauty should be cherished. I use Lux Toilet Soap every day. It has such wonderful creamy lather. Now why don't you take a tip from this distinguished star? Make luxurious white Lux Toilet Soap your daily beauty soap, too. When you unwrap a cake of this fine soap... Notice how satiny smooth it is to the touch. That's a promise of the rich, creamy lather Lux Toilet Soap gives. Lather that's quick and abundant, even in hard water. Your complexion is precious to you. Are you missing out by not using a soap that's as gentle and fine as you can buy? Lux Toilet Soap costs so little. Now remember, it's hard milled. That means every cake can be used down to the last thin sliver. Start using Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's beauty soap, tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Curtain rises on the third act of I Wanted Wings, starring Ray Milland, William Holden, and Veronica Lake, with Lynn Carver. The story continues. The record of a man who wanted wings. The officers of the court-martial hear the testimony... Of Albert Ludlow. When I took Sally away and married her, I felt good about it. At least I was doing something I didn't have to be ashamed of. I was helping Jeff get his wings. The marriage didn't last long. It couldn't. We moved to a cheap flat in Kansas City. All right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, did you forget your key again? Yeah, sorry. I was talking on the phone. Well, go ahead. Hello, Tony? Look, what about a spot for me at the Paradise? <laughs> Listen, I'm a married woman now. I don't want a trip to Florida. I want a job. Okay, Tony, skip it. I'm sorry I bothered you. 
phony Vanessa, the wolf. Well, what happened today? Nothing. You mean you didn't get... I the... told you nothing. Don't bite my head off. I only asked a question. Well, it would have been a commission job anyway. Don't kid me, Al. You didn't want that job. You don't want any job except flying. I'm through with flying. I don't want any part of it. Is dinner ready? I'm sick of cooking for you. I don't have to stay here. I can skip right now. You think the baby's stopping me. Well, there isn't any baby. There never was. Oh, I knew that, Sally. You knew? Then what did you marry me for? Well, does it matter? So you didn't want to help me because you thought... You didn't care anything about me. What a sucker I've been. Trying to make a go of a two-cent marriage when all the time you're just grandstanding for a guy named Jeff Young. It's on me, isn't it, Al? All right. But I'm walking out now. She left that night. I don't know where. I came out to the coast and enlisted in the service as a mechanic, stationed at March Field. One day I heard there was going to be maneuvers. A lot of new ships came in. Bombers. And that night, Jeff flew in with Captain Murphy. Form sheet on 64, sir. Told you to drain those pressure gauges. Taking off tonight, not next week. Yes, sir. Young, is that the B-17 we borrowed from Hamilton? Yes, sir. Just rolled her in. That brings our squadron up to full strength. Well, keep their enlisted men, but we'll supply the officers. Yes, sir. Haven't checked the new ship yet, sir. Excuse me. Go to it. Crew chief, up front, sir. Coming. Get down here, will you? Al! Oh, Jeff, is that you? Oh, for the love of Pete, where were you? Where have you been? Oh, gee, you look swell, Jeff. Come on, spill it. Where have you been hiding? I dragged the whole country for you. Oh, did you? Well, I, I moved around pretty much. What about Sally? Oh, last I heard, she was in Florida. We're, we're washed up. Uh, how's Carolyn? Oh, I haven't seen her since graduation. Oh, I don't get it. You two were dead right for each other. What happened? Where is she? Oh, she's up north somewhere. I keep myself too busy to think about it. But say, crew chief on Obama. Mister, you're doing all right on a year. Oh, acting crew chief, sir. Oh, don't give me that sir stuff. If I write, I ought to be taking orders from you. Yeah. Sir. Come on, I'll meet your commanding officer. What's wrong with this emergency release? Uh, door doesn't drop, sir. Air Corps supply won't have parts until tomorrow. Well, let alone. <laughs> you can't stay away from it, can you? Well, if I can't fly him, sir, at least I can polish their wings. I'm glad you're back with us. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll get the checklist, sir. Right back. There's a man who should be flying, Captain. Can we do something? Uh, I've got a friend or two in the chief's office. Cases have been reconsidered before. And but right now we've got other things to do. All right, men. You get those players installed in the bomb bay? All set, sir. Good enough. Oh, well. Oh, that emergency release is okay now. Well, look, Al. I spoke to Mercer about another crack at Kelly. He said he got a bat for you. Oh, do you think there's a chance? You know Mercer. If there is, he'll swing it. Oh, boy, the way I feel right now, I could swing the ship over my shoulder and carry it out of the hangar. <laughs> Look, I'm late for the pilot's meeting. But when we get back tonight, well, we've got a lot to talk about. See you then. Yeah, see you, Jeff. Uh, Charlie, what about that turbo supercharger? It's all okay. I'm working on the carburetor. Uh, when you finish, knock off for a while. Right. And if you want me, I'll be uh, right outside the hangar. Where can I find Lieutenant Young? I... Al. Oh, Sally, what are you doing here? Al, help me. Help me. They followed me. The police are out there now. Get out of here. Al, I'm your wife. I'm in a jam, a bad one. Tony Vanessi's dead. Somebody shot him, killed him. They framed me. They said I did it. Did you? Al, please. Did you? Yes. And I'd do it again. I'd do it again. You've always helped me, Al. You've never turned me down. Oh, you were born to kill somebody, Sally. He hit me. He hurt me. Oh, shut up. You can't stay here. Have you got any money? No. Oh, here. Here's everything I've got. Now, wait around the hangar until you see your chance and then get back to Los Angeles. Will you meet me there? No, you're on your own, Sally. Oh, please. I don't know where to turn. I've got to talk to somebody. I'm all alone. Tomorrow night, Al, at the station. Please, Al. All right. They must have turned me out labeled sucker. Now, get out of here. We're taking off in maneuvers. The ship took off a few minutes later. Jeff was pilot, and I was on as crew chief. But what I didn't know was that Sally was on it, too. She was hiding in the bomb bay. She didn't have time to get off. When I went back, I saw her. She was scared. Al, get me out of here. I'm sick, Al. I can't breathe. I'm scared. Take me up front with you, Al. Oh, you must be crazy. You want them to see you? 
Now, you stay right here until I come and get you. And stay put. And look out for those flares. In 15 seconds, they could blow us all to glory. Understand? But I can't stand it in here any longer. I can't. Well, now you will. Now, get over there. Al, don't leave me in here. Look out. <laughs> Light flare! Light flare! Light flare! Go on, please. Then what happened? Well, there were sparks all over the bomb bay, and, and I'm not sure just what did happen. I can take it up from there, sir. Go on, Captain Mercer. I heard Ludlow call live flare. I went back and we started to unload it through the Bombay door. We got the flare through all right, but I slipped and fell. The Bombay door was wide open. I tried to grab the catwalk, but the slipstream was pulling me out of the plane. Ludlow tried to hold me and we both went down. We had our chutes on, of course, but mine was late in opening. I hit a tree and was knocked unconscious. Young saw the chutes and started down after us. He landed in a narrow space surrounded by hills. When I came to for a minute, he was leaning over me. You all right, sir? Oh, you're a fool, young. Who taught you to land a plane in the middle of the night? A spot like this? I didn't. We made it, sir. We're getting you out. You're pretty badly hurt. We have to get you to a hospital. No, no. We're staying here. Notify Marchfield. We're staying here. Oh, he's dying, Jeff. What are we going to do? I'm taking off. They don't care that much. We can't get out. The ridge, we can't get out. We can't get out. Listen, men. Yes, sir. I'm in command now. We're taking off. Anybody like to stay? All right, bring that stretcher. All set for the takeoff, sir. All right, give me every last inch of manifold pressure. Those engines will take up burning up. Go ahead. Wide open, sir. Here we go, Al. Jeff, got to try. More pressure, more pressure. That's all we've got, sir. There's got to be more. Watch it, Jeff. Watch it. Jeff, look out. The ridge. Jeff. Is everybody all right? Any of the crew hurt? Uh, nothing serious, sir. We've sent out a message. Lieutenant Young. Yeah? There's a girl back there, sir. Girl? Are you crazy? She must have been on the tail of the ship, sir. She's badly hurt. Ludlow's with her. Al, hold me. Oh, it's all right, Sally. I... I hurt Al. Make it stop. Make it go away. That's Al. It's not hurting now. You... You're a really good guy. Oh, she's gone. She's gone, Jeff. Her troubles are over. Nobody can hurt her anymore. You know something? I loved her. Yeah, I, I couldn't help it. That's the whole story, sir. That's why Lieutenant Young pleaded guilty, to shield me. He said the court would never believe that I didn't know my wife was on the ship. He said I'd be finished for good. I'd never get another chance. He said he knew he had to go, but there was no sense in both of us taking it. That's all, sir. The court will reconvene in one hour. Have the accused and the witnesses present. Excuse me, is Lieutenant Young in the court? He's in the corridor somewhere, miss. Oh, uh, there he is. Oh, thank you. Uh, there, there hasn't been any decision yet. In a few minutes, I think. Good luck, Jeff. Carolyn. I, I thought you might want to see me. Want to see you? I'd like to tell you how much, but I can't. Why, Jeff? Don't you know? You're about to tie a tin can to my tail. But thanks for coming anyway. I'm here to stay this time. Nope. I wouldn't ask you to hang my dishonorable discharge where home sweet home ought to be. That won't matter. Not to you, maybe. But it would to me. Uh, Jeff, they want you inside. Thanks. Goodbye, Carolyn. I'll be waiting, Jeff. That verdict's for me, too. <clears throat> the accused will face the court. Of the specification, charge one, not guilty. Not guilty. 
The court finds that Lieutenant Young's decision to disregard Captain Mercer's command was justified under the extraordinary circumstances. Of the specification charge two, not guilty. There they are. Look at that formation, Carolyn. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yes. I remember standing like this with Al one time. Which plane is his, Jeff? There's so many of them. He's the first. Right up there where he belongs. Finally got his wings, didn't he? Yep. They need men like Al. Men to fly the greatest ships the world can build. We're getting them. We're getting the planes, too. You think that's a lot up there? That sky will be black with them someday, and soon. Yes, we'll get our wings, American wings, for American fighters. The men with wings, all honor and good hunting. To Raymer Land, Bill Holden, and Veronica Lake, we dip our wings for an exciting performance. Thanks, C.B. The Air Corps cadets of a few weeks back are the first-line fighting pilots of today. So wherever they may be, Iceland, Hawaii, Bataan, or Australia, we have one wish for them. Happy landing. And a promise that we won't fail them. What's the best way for us to help, Mr. DeMille? There isn't a man, woman, or child in the country who can't help by doing his or her job a little better, working a little harder. If 130 million Americans all work a little harder, more planes, more tanks, and more guns will come rolling off the assembly lines, and there'll be more ships to carry them to armies that'll use them at the right places and at the right times. The word of the hour is work and more work. We're going to buy plenty of United States saving bonds and stamps to pay for those planes and guns. Buns every payday and stamps in between. And I can hear an echo of that from Maine to California. Veronica, you're the only one in our cast who hasn't visited the Lux Radio Theater before. But I'd like to assure you now that your first visit will not be your last. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I am a stranger to this theater, but far from a stranger to Lux Soap. I've used it for a long time now, so I know how really fine it is. A Lux complexion is something every girl wants. And should have, Veronica. There's luck in that Lux soap. Uh, what about next week, Mr. DeMille? Got a play? We certainly have, Bill. And it's one to make us all stand up and cheer. Because it's the Warner Brothers hit, The Fighting 69th. And our stars will be Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy. This is a thrilling story of the First World War. The story of a regiment with famous names like Wild Bill Donovan and Father Duffy on its roster. If you're looking for a drama of action and adventure and raw courage, you'll like the Fighting 69th next Monday evening. Well, it sounds great, Mr. DeMille. I want to hear it. Well, good night. Uh, just a moment before you all go. Bill Holden hasn't been talking about it much, but I think the audience would like to know that he's going into the Army on April 11th. From all of us, Bill. Well, thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night to all of you. And keep them flying. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy in the Fighting 69th. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> William Holden is currently starring in the Paramount picture, The Fleet Sin. Veronica Lake is now being seen on the screen in the Paramount production, Sullivan's Travel. Heard in tonight's play were Warren Ash as Captain Mercer, and Leo Cleary, Boyd Davis, Arthur Gilmore, Griff Barnett, Edward Marr, and Howard McNear. Tune in next Monday night to hear Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy in The Fighting 69th. Our music 
was directed by Louis Silvers. And your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs>